In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, this is uh, basically the first uh, public Mass I've celebrated since we've been caught up in uh, the aftermath of the tragic death of um, George Floyd. Um, like you, I've been at times angry and scared, sad, and kind of, even in a strange way, hopeful that maybe a moment has come in history when we might actually see some lasting change. I want to acknowledge that right at the very beginning of this Mass because in a way it's the first opportunity I've, I've had to do that by this medium. But I'm going to let it go for a little bit because I want to speak uh, extensively about it uh, on Mass on Sunday. And um, so please forgive me for mentioning it here at the beginning, but also just uh, gently putting it aside for a moment so that we can concentrate on the feast today, which is the patronal feast of uh, the Bo parish of St. Boniface. For the first time in probably 168 years, there will be no public mass for his feast day. It's a sad reminder of uh, the days in which we live, the consequences of the pandemic, and in a way also of the times in which we live. Maybe St. Boniface can remind us of the truth of our faith and the importance of preserving it, and we could ask for his intercession and protection. Acknowledging our sin. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. I made a mistake. <laughs> Don't worry. It's all right. We all make mistakes. Let us pray. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. May the martyr, St. Boniface, be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed in his blood and confidently profess it by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul said, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. On the contrary, first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout the whole country of Judea and then to the Gentiles, I preached the need to repent and turn to God and to do works giving evidence of repentance. That is why the Jews seized me when I was in the temple and tried to kill me. But I have enjoyed God's help to this very day, and so I stand there here testifying to small and great alike, saying nothing different from what the prophets and Moses foretold, that the Messiah must suffer, and that as the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to your Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. I think I have to stand here, Father Michael, otherwise I'm in the dark. All right. Um, which might be more true than I'd like to admit. It seems entirely appropriate that uh, since this, as I said at the beginning, is probably the first non-public mass in 168 years of this parish under the patronage of St. Boniface, that I'd like to pray for the, the parishioners of St. Boniface and of, of Assumption, of course, uh, for every member of our parish at this time. This week we did a couple of soft openings of, of our church and we had a few people pop in here and it was nice, honestly, to see some people again in our church, albeit not as many as we would like. A church with our people is frankly just a building. We're going to open, and I wanted to say that clearly, uh, each Monday to Friday, uh, as we've been doing a little bit this week, from noon to two each day. We have a generous group of volunteers who are helping, and uh, young Julian Navarro, who's going to be the constant throughout the week. On Wednesdays, uh, maybe you would have an opportunity to stop in during those two hours uh, at Brenda Becker Walker's suggestion. We're going to do adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And I'm going to offer, at social distancing, uh, the possibility of confessions. We'll see how that goes. And on Sundays, we intend to open starting this Sunday from 10 to noon. So if you get the chance, uh, please stop by. Uh, we miss you. And as I've heard many people say, uh, they miss being in this space. So this is an opportunity to begin that. And we'll give guidelines to ensure everyone's safety. St. Boniface, as you know, uh, was a martyr, and uh, the stained glass on either side of the sanctuary, and I want to pull out the one on the left side, which is uh, of his martyrdom, um, was a martyr. And it's easy to kind of imagine that the main point of a mar martyr's life is that they they died for their faith, which is absolutely true, of course. But I f think, frankly, um, that's to stop at the wrong point. The point of a martyr is that they lived their life in fidelity to the point of death. The death did not stop them from loving and caring, even to the giving of their lives. And like God in Jesus, they gave their all. But honestly, the truth of the matter is that uh, once having given your life, that's kind of it. What makes a life significant and impactful and meaningful is that that is taken up by others. And the German immigrants who founded this parish in 1854 saw in St. Boniface, a model for themselves. As immigrants, strangers in a, in a strange land with hope in their hearts, 
but facing incredible obstacles, they saw what St. Boniface did in his life, and not only in his death, that he didn't give up, that he continued to fight and to struggle and to, to give all. And they saw in that a, a model for what they needed to do. And thank God, you know, as a, a country of immigrants, that there were so many people who did exactly that. That they lived their lives often to the point of giving their lives uh, for the benefit of those who would follow. And we're the beneficiaries of that. And so I wanted to kind of concentrate on that a little bit uh, today, just to draw this point very quickly to a close. That, you know, in our own time, in our own way, we're all called to do something heroic. And it's easy to think that we can kind of leave it to the martyrs, if I can use that language. But that's not the case. <laughs> what a martyr is saying to us is that we, we all need to do this, to use our voices, to make our actions consistent with the gospel that we say that we believe in. And that will cost. And in these times, we know that it costs a lot. If we're going to honor St. Boniface, not just as a memory safe within the pages of history, but a saint whose witness is alive provocatively today, then we need to do that. Speak up. Put our safety and our security on the line for the rights of others. These times demand it of us. Let not martyrs be some history lesson. Let martyrs be how we try to live our lives in loving concern and care for others. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given in human hands, let become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, let become for us a spirit-filled drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you, please, the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace may we be set afire with the flame of your love, through which St. Boniface overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Boniface, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, especially those for whom we now pray. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Boniface, Saint Philip Neri, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. With the words and the spirit that Jesus gave us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, make your body and your love and combination better. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, Saint Boniface, faithful in your service, even to the point of giving his life and victorious in his suffering. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be safe. Uh, please take care of each other. Please pray for our peace in our world and in our country. Please, please, please make some effort to work for justice. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God.